Today on Locked On Bama, we're going to talk all things NIL. Look, NIL is dominating college football, college basketball world. So we don't want to find out more about it, especially from an Alabama perspective. So we welcome in Philip Stutz with High Tide Traditions. We're going to talk to him about the NIL, what it means, what it is, what's going on, uh, who knows about it. Philip knows about it, and he's going to tell us about it here in just a minute. Our Locked On Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey again, everybody. Welcome back in to Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me. Jimmy Stein, that's him. I won't even ask how you're doing today, Jimmy, because we got a guest, Philip Stutz. <laughs> Uh, Philip, with High Tide Traditions, who you've seen him on Fine Bomb, you've seen him on Fox Business, you've seen him, you might have seen him at Starbucks, I don't know, wherever you've seen him. You might have seen him at his house if you're his wife watching this, whatever, I don't care. Um, but Philip is a great dude, he knows everything about the NIL, he's with High Tide Traditions, as I mentioned. Philip, welcome to the show, buddy. Hey, excited to be here. Lo love what you guys are putting out um, to, to the Alabama Nation, and uh, honored to be on today. Really do appreciate you, buddy, and... Um, Look, let's just let's just get started with this. I mean, because I think the NIL is so um, ambiguous to everybody. I mean, it, it's really hard to put your arms around it because there's no <coughs> consensus right. about what it entails. At least right. it seems like. So, I guess from your perspective, just describe the NIL and high tide traditions. Let's start there. Well, let, let's yeah, let's t let's go in the background of it because I think for everybody listening, it, it's important. There, there are so many crazy stories out there right now. And everybody's like uh, everybody's reporting on all the crazy stories. Right. And I think it's important to understand what we're working under and what's going on. So, like, uh, I had lunch with Coach Saban um, like six, seven weeks ago. And, you know, they're not involved. The university's really not involved in the collective. But he basically said, look, just do what you got to do, but make sure we're in compliance and make sure the players in all sports have an equal opportunity to make money and maximize their NIL value. And so that's it. Right. And, you know, one of the things that, that was clear to me when I came on board was like, this is not going to be a donor led NIL collective, which is different than what you're seeing in all the news right now. And the reason that this background is important is because there's a war I mean, an absolute war in college uh, sp athletics right now, really specifically because of college football, because it makes the most money. And, and, and it's about an 18 to 21, 24 month war. Who's going to come out ahead in the next year and a half, two years and be the collective that sort of is the standard of the industry? And no one's talking about that. Like literally everybody's talking about the you know, $4 million donation here or the $8 million player there and all that stuff. But no one's talking about you know, the best way to describe it, and it is, it's, it's a marathon. And do, do y'all remember um, when we're all about the same age? So do you remember when we would watch the news when we were little and it'd be like, today the Boston Marathon was running and they, they'll show the clip. And then there's this dude that just runs out at like the, the, the gun goes off at the starting line and some dude is running full sprint like a madman and, and he's in the lead for like literally five seconds, right? And then, you know, everybody comes comes and kind of overtakes them, right? That's in a way how I see NIL going right now. You're going to see these big universities, and I don't know what everybody's doing because I don't work with them. But you hear the universities, the big ones right now that are out there doing these massive deals and in the headlines, and they are sprinting out ahead of the pack. And maybe that's what they should do right now. But you're not going to win a marathon by sprinting at the very beginning. And so our job is to come in and build a sustainable model that no matter if the federal government or the NCAA gets involved, our model is going to fit nicely in it and it's going to be compliant and it's going to benefit the players more than anything else. And so let I, you know, I can walk over like how we're setting that up, but I think, you know, Luke and Jimmy, I think it'd be really interesting to tell you how screwed up some of these models are. And how Alabama is going to do it different and set the standard, but you may not feel it for a while, right? Because we're just going to run it a steady race and then we're going to come out in the end on, on top. But, um, you know, tell me how you guys kind of want to take the conversation. I'm happy to, to go there. Um, Phil, uh, 
Jimmy, I'm going to let you ask the question sure. after we take the first break. But um, I guess one thing I want to ask about is, and, and, I, and I'm sort of skipping ahead, but there was a report yesterday mm. that the NCAA is about to start cracking down mm. on uh, some of these collectives that have gotten a little nutty, yeah. uh, quote unquote, and, and define nutty at this point. Because you have, like you said, some places are just sprinting out ahead. Some places are taking a little bit more cautiously. Um but what exactly do you think they can do to crack down? I mean, I, it's so hard to understand the rules, and they, they go almost state by state or school by school. Right, they do. Um, yep. I, I don't know how you crack down on anything when there's no uh, set standard. I don't know. I, I think this is all blush. Like, really, how fast is the NCAA going to move? And then how fast is the enforcement going to go? So there's a Wild West aspect to this that is in play and not going anywhere for in the short run, like we just talked about. He, he, let me, you know, if you're good with it, I'm going to walk through some of the big problems that are going on with some of these universities that are sprinting out ahead. Um, one, you know, I've, I've said this from the beginning when I, when I sat down with the high tide. I said, look. No business, no business owner, right, is going to continue to give to a collective or, you know, sign NIL deals if it eventually doesn't make them money. <laughs> like, you know, Luke, you have a family business. Uh, Jimmy, you also have a law practice, right? How long do you go giving money to something that literally has no return? It doesn't work that way. And we always hear about this. You know, the example is like um, pro sports. Uh, oh, why doesn't that owner just write the $350 million check to the player? Because the owner doesn't do anything that doesn't make him money or her money, right? And so the point is, is that this donor-led model is only going to work for so long but before the business owner goes, well, hold on just a second. Like, I can't just keep writing checks that aren't going to make me money. Like, something's got to change at this point. I'm writing them to the alumni fund. I'm writing to get my seats. I'm writing checks to this university all over the place. Now you got to write another check and you can't write it off. It's not a it's not a charity donation. That model doesn't seem to work. And that <clears throat> now what happens if that coach, let's say at Tennessee, has a seven and four season or a five and eight season or something like that, then how many donors are going to actually continue to give now? Right. So like, and the other thing is like, if you know, we always talk about this in politics, writing a check and not giving a write off, it's almost an unnatural act. So I come from the world of, of political marketing, right? And it just political fundraising is really hard. So is all fundraising. And that's the dirty little secret. Nobody thinks that, oh, well, this collective's got 20,000 million, $20 million. It doesn't work that you, maybe you have one donor that wrote 19 and that, you know, $19.999 million check. But other than that, they can't raise anything, right? The other play, the, the other thing is the player revolts that are going to happen pretty soon. You've already just seen this happen with the University of Miami, right? You have um, Nigel Pack that just transferred in and got this eight hundred thousand dollar deal, and then you got Isaiah Wong, who's this established, worked his butt off player that is one of their best players that says, "Well, what about me?" Right, and that's because the model that Miami has is a donor-led model. It's just throw money at them, but that's going to create so much division within the team, and it's just not sustainable. It's just not sustainable. And then that donor—I I can't think of the guy's name in Miami, but imagine Ruiz. the. I think it's Ruiz. Yeah, Ruiz. Imagine Ruiz. Right, has funded this entire Miami football team. Right. So what is going to happen? When his players aren't playing, he's going to start calling Mario Cristobal and saying, I want my players to play. Now you've got this donor demanding playtime for his players. This is an insane model. It's not sustainable. And like how people don't use common sense and see that this is, okay, I get it. Maybe you can go buy players in 2022. Good. Go for you. Go, go for it. There are no rules. But ultimately, there is, it's a house of cards that will absolutely collapse. And what I keep thinking of is what's, what, what is Coach Saban, Coach Oates, and the rest of the coaches at Alabama, men's and women's sports, what is the model that makes sure that it's last, that in 24 months it's the standard, that every other university is like, we should have done this from the beginning. How come we didn't do this from the beginning? My God, we have put ourselves in a horrible situation. And that's where I'm focused more than anything else. Jimmy, when we come back from this break, 
I'm going to let you ask your questions, but right now I need to tell everybody about betonline.net. Betonline.net, look here. I put it up because I'm getting more tech savvy by the minute. Betonline.net is your number one source for all your betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's NBA playoffs, the Major League Baseball season, all that stuff. Um, I'm telling you. And look, they've even got Kentucky Derby. It will be on, I think, this coming weekend. I'm not really sure. I've got a dance recital, so I'm not going to be able to watch it. Uh, not for me, for my daughter. <laughs> that would be funny, though. You can well, bet on that. Uh, bet I would, online be, watching. I would be watching it. <laughs> bet, on, bet online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information from live betting to playoffs to esports and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and actions at betonline.net because that's where the game starts betonline.net. They are bringing us this podcast today. They are our main sponsor. We appreciate them a ton. Uh, they are the best in the business. And now I can't get back to my regular. See, this is why I don't do this. This you is brag. why. I... Now, now I got it. I, I was showing some people some different stuff. That's just flash marketing, you know, where you just sort of flash things up there subliminally, kind of. Uh, uh, yeah, whatever. Um, Jimmy, go ahead and yep. ask Philip what you got, bro. He's yes, by the way, sir, Jimmy. Phillip. Jimmy, yep. Jimmy, really quickly, we've got about twelve more minutes with Philip, so let's sure. knock it out. Sure, uh, Phil. You know we don't have to get into the specifics of how high tide tradition works, but am I wrong to assume that the the Alabama athletes that uh, that sign with high tide traditions, and I believe on y'all's Twitter account, y'all are often showing which yeah. athlete at Alabama yep. has signed with high tide tradition, which means uh, an agreement with uh, with the collective uh, that allows them to collect uh, a certain amount of money in, in exchange for them, uh, you know, doing things for uh, the collective, right? Um, aren't the kids also, the athletes, free to pursue NIL opportunities outside of high tide tradition? Absolutely. Absolutely. So look, Bryce Young is going to have no problem. He's got a, a sports agency and the, you know, obviously with, I think it's CAA, but I mean, you know, deals are going to fall in his lap. Right. But there is a very large percentage of players on all sports teams in Alabama who may have large social media followings, but no one knows them outside of their social media followings. Right. And so who's going to be sort of the agency that helps them get deals. And that's where the collective comes in and really maximizes their potential to make money, right? Maximizes their opportunity to make money. So if you're good though, like I'll get into a little bit of the specifics of how we're setting this up. Um, and I think this is what was intriguing to Alabama to bring me in, which is I have, we're going to run a money ball collective at Alabama for the high tide, high tide traditions. Um, everything's going to be based on data and analytics. And I have a partnership with the largest data collection analytics and AI company in America. And in the database I work with, we have 230 million American consumers, 550 million connected devices. We're tracking 10 billion online purchasing decisions every day and a trillion searches. And so I'm going to be able to go to a business owner, let's say it's a law firm, or, you know, like we, we just, uh, we're working with NASCAR right now. And we're going to say, we're going to match the right player with your fans and audience or cons customer. And then we're going to be able to tell through our data and analytics approach what the messages should be in, in that advertisement, what the target market is. And so what we're doing is focusing on making sure the business owner makes money with the player. Because if the business owner makes money with the player, then the business owner is going to employ the player a lot longer. And the player is going to maximize their potential or their, their, their NIL opportunity. The, the stupidest thing that people are doing right now is that they're throwing cash at them without any regard to what the long-term impact is. And so the long-term impact of what we're doing is the business owner has to win. And when the business owner wins, when they make money, then the player is going to keep that contract for a hell of a lot longer and make a hell of a lot more money. And so the approach, listen, I've done, uh, we've advised Mark Cuban, we've advised uh, Elon Musk's business partner, Fortune 200 company. This is what they do, right? This is how they approach marketing. And this is, so they work with, you know, and we advise them on, on how we use data and analytics to grow and understand their customer base 
and, and, and appeal to that audience more than anybody else. And we're going to build that at Alabama. We're building that right now. But that's the approach, and that's how we're doing it differently. And in terms of, uh, you know, Luke had already talked about the uh, that the crackdown as reported by Ross Dellinger and other people yep. in, the, in yep. the national media yesterday. Uh, and and uh, the, the collective doesn't work with Alabama, but I assume there's some sort of contact with Alabama compliance. Correct. In terms of everyone being on the same page uh, compliance wise. Yeah, you you really the, the Alabama had to amend its law, the Aaron and I, and I all law they put in place uh, in a previous year, and then they just amended it, you know, back in like January, I think, and then uh, now we can coordinate with the university, but really it's a it's a compliance coordination. That's it. We're on our own. That's the truth. Right. Right. Yeah. So I were, so y'all talk to compliance. I mean, I mean, so so y'all are allowed to ask questions, work with Alabama yeah. compliance, make sure all that, but it, but you don't work with. Greg Byrne, Nick Saban, Patrick no. Murphy, nope. Nate Oates. Right. Nope. No, I mean, I've talked to the, all those guys, but like, again, just wanting to know their perspective. But they basically have handed this off and said, you're, you do what you guys need to do. But, you know, we're, we're out. Right. And, yes. and ultimately, that's the only way it's going to work long term. Like, again, my charge was we've got to fit this into whatever – Look, there's going to be federal legislation at some point. There's going to be NCAA legislation at some point. There's going to be a lot of different oversights that come in. So what is the collective going to look like when those happen? And my whole point is let's just build something that fits nicely in that and doesn't have to change and continues the forward momentum that maximizes the player opportunity. We're going to go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we're going to wrap it up with uh, Philip Stutz of High Tide Traditions. All right, Philip, one thing I want to ask you really quickly, do you feel like um, this, all this NIL and the transfer portal stuff um, could eventually lead to some schools not being able to keep up and just maybe even dropping football and having this gigantic super conference that is uh, sort of, I don't know, anywhere from 40 to 60 teams, and that's what we have from now on instead of having – a Utah State or a, a somebody like that. I'm not trying to pick on Utah State. And also, fill us in on what you think about this whole Jordan Addison situation. So, first of all, you remember when Coach Saban went on a rant about the spread offense about 10 years ago? Yes. And said, do you really want this for college football? And then he said, okay, fine. You want it? We're just going to play it the way uh, – <laughs> I'm going to play. Right. And so as you've seen in the media, Coach Saban's comments recently, which were, you know, do you really want this chaotic model in place? Right. And, you know, obviously we're going to build the model that's sort of the the new spread offense of what, you know, Saban brought into Alabama and projected us in or projected the university football team into even more championships. So, all I know is that we're going to play within the rules. And then obviously, you know, I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm the first person that ever went on maybe ESPN, but I know on fine bomb show in the, in late, late summer, 2019. And I basically said a nuclear bomb is about to drop in college football and no one's talking about it. It's this thing called NIL. And, you know, and I, find I remember I was up in New York in the studio with him and he at the time was like, what is this? You know, like, and, you know, this is a nuclear bomb and now it is going off. Like I, I, I was like the guy screaming, you know, from uh, behind the hill, it's going to go off, but it's going off. Right. So what the fallout is from that, we're going to see, I have no idea. There's so many weird changes and weird things that are going to come in the next few months and years. All I can focus on and control is how do we build the one in Alabama that may it make sure and ensures that the players make a lot of money, right? Uh, that they have success with NIL. It follows the rules more than anything else. And that it helps Alabama set the standard and stay on top of uh, the college sports world in all the sports they play. Philip, this is fascinating stuff, buddy. I know you got to run, so we'll let you go. Uh, this was amazing. Thank you so much for being with us. Definitely want to have you on again because this will be something that we keep talking yeah. about. And, you know, you mentioned at the very beginning you're in, uh, you've are in, you been in the political fundraising aspect of some various things in marketing. And I feel like I'm probably as much of an expert as that as you are now because I just finished Ozark, and I feel pretty Oh, good. yeah. That's how it works. 
Yeah, right. that's exactly how it goes down. Uh, all right, buddy. Thanks so much. For being yeah, thanks, guys, us. for having me on. Appreciate it. Hey, man, we will have you on again soon. You were great. Absolutely. And uh, until we talk again, everybody, roll tide. Roll tide.